Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another three looks on palette. It seems like my channel recently has just been first impressions and three looks on palette videos and I'm not mad about it. This three looks on palette <laughs> is using the Lorac Fairy Tale Forest palette. I did a first impression on this, which I will link in the cards and down below. Um, this was prior, like this is my first experience using Lorac shadows and I have had a great time using it. I, I'm really glad that I, if you didn't watch my first impressions, I used points <laughs> from Shoppers Drug Mart or Pharma Pre if you're here in Quebec um, to buy this palette. So I, I used points. I didn't actually like pay my own, own dollars for this palette, but I'm a really happy with my decision. I think it's a great little neutral palette. I tried to do, tried to stretch the range of this palette and like see how different I could make the looks that I did. So I did that one was more rosy toned, one that was like pretty truly neutral, and then this one, which is obviously green, a little bit like greeny neutral. I don't have anything else to say. You know how these videos go. Let's get into the first look and I will give you my thoughts on this palette at the end. And I will hopefully leave timestamps in a pinned comment. <laughs> okay, hello. Welcome to the first look using the Lorac Fairy Tale Forest palette. I was, <laughs> I literally was about to say I'm going to do a neutral look and then I was like, no other option. No other option. So I'm going to do something that leans more pinky or like rosy today, I think. So let me just get my little card out here that has the shades on it. So I'm going to mix the shade Birch, which is this beige, and the shade Mushroom, which is this like basically neutral taupe shade. And I'm going to run this through my crease. I'm going to do a halo eye today, so I'm just going to make this more rounded. And I've primed my eyes using my NARS Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base, and I have not set my lids. Okay, now I'm going to take the shade Rosewood which is this rosy shade. And I'm going to put this on my inner and outer corners and connect it through my crease. to take the shade Woodland which is this brown and I'm going to use this to deepen my crease and I'm gonna just build it up as much as I can basically well deepen my inner and outer corners and then my crease as well palette for the first time and it is a lot okay it's like the the like not the dimensions but the like perspective or whatever is off and it, it's like looking in like a funhouse mirror it's actually bizarre like I can't even use it it makes like my 
head spin, which is so weird. I've never had, it like makes you look super like way further away than you are. I don't know, it's like really weird. Have and Has anyone ever like experienced that in a mirror in a palette before? And I don't have the sticker on it or anything, that's super weird, okay. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to take the shade Wildflower, which is this, like, warm, like, purpley toned, dark metallic color. I think it's really, really beautiful. I'm going to take a little bit of the NYX Glitter Primer on my little brush here and just put this in the center of my lid where obviously, or the like, is part of my lid that doesn't have shadow on it right now. So I'm not going for like a super precise like cut crease halo eye or anything. Okay, and then I'm gonna take Wildflower, like I said, and just put that over the glitter primer. It's really pretty but obviously I need to do a little bit of blending because it's basically like the same depth as my lid so I'm gonna take woodland and just blend this into my <laughs> into the middle of my lid where my shadow is just to make sure that I don't have like any super harsh lines and then also take that over the center of my crease and this is the specific problem that I have with glitter glue. Because now it's just not really blending out. So I'm going to have to probably go into the black and just make sure that the depth is all here. So actually, I'm just going to take more of the shade Wildflower on this brush, on this flat brush that I used, and just use the shimmer to diffuse out on it to like on the edges okay and then I'm gonna take wildflower on my finger and use this to intensify it and then also <laughs> use this to help blend that shadow out as well really nice I like the like rosiness of this shade and I like how much like depth I was able to get And now I'm going to take the shade Butterfly, which is this pink gold duochrome. I'm just going to take this on my finger and I'm going to basically pat this in the center of my lid. I'm not being super precise with this either, but I want to concentrate it more in the center of my lid than the shade Wildflower and these two shades layered. So pretty. Okay, so I'm quickly, I'm just going to take the shade uh, Rosewood, very gently run this over the edge, and then I'm also going to go back just slightly with the shade Mushroom, probably just by itself, and just buff this over the very edge of the shadow just to help everything blend, maybe go back in with a little bit more of Butterfly, I'm almost bringing that right up to the brow bone. I'm just sticking. And then I'm gonna take the shade Como Rebi, which is this uh, champagne like shimmer, on um, just a little flat brush and take a touch of this on my brow bone. For my lower lash line, I'm going to take the shade um, Rosewood, just run this all underneath. Then I'm going to take the shade Woodland, that brown, and just deepen my lash line with this. And then I'm going to take that mixture of Birch and Mushroom and blend my lower lash line out. I took this out a little bit more than I wanted to on my outer corner, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to go into Butterfly with my pinky and put this in the center of my lower lash line. 
Before I do my inner corner highlight, I'm just going to take a single matte black. So this is the Pat McGrath Labs just single um, eyeshadow in dark matter, but literally any black will do. And I'm just going to use that to deepen my inner and outer corners, my top and bottom, like lash line lid, you know. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to take the shade North Star. I'm going to spray that and put this, yeah, on my inner corners. I don't know if I already said that or not. Okay, so now I am done. This is basically all I'm going to do. I'm going to quickly hop off camera, finish up my face, put my lashes on my lips, and then be back to conclude. Okay, so this is my finished first look. I really like it. It's maybe a little bit more smoky oops, than I initially intended, but I'm glad that I was able to get this depth and this shade Butterfly. It probably won't show up on camera just because of the lighting and stuff, but it is so sparkly. It's so shiny. Really, really beautiful. Um, yeah, and uh, on my lips I went with more of a movie lip. I don't typically go for this, but I thought that it kind of tied into like what my eyes were doing. Anyway, I used the NYX Suede Matte Lip Liner in the shade Brooklyn Thorn, which is a new purchase for me. It's like a cool toned purple lip liner. I really, really like it. And then I also use, <laughs> this is, I'm almost positive this was a birthday like Sephora gift a couple years ago. It's the Bite Beauty Matte Creme Lip Crayon in the shade Glacé, but I'm pretty sure that they discontinued these. Anyway, it's just a mauve lipstick, but I wore this lip combo the other day and I really liked it. And yeah, this is the finished look. <laughs> like I said, I don't have much else to say, so let's just get into the second look. Okay, hello, welcome to the second look using the Lorac Fairy Tale Forest palette. I'm gonna do something pretty like easy, chill, nothing too crazy because I feel like that's really what this palette lends to is just like simpler, easier, obviously neutral looks. I'm gonna start using the shade Oak, which is this matte neutral brown up at the top here. And I'm just going to run this through my crease as a transition shade. <laughs> Now I'm going to take the shade Redwood, this warm brown, and put this in my outer corner in my crease. the shade Woodland, this darker brown, and use that to deepen my crease. Okay, so I'm going, I'm not going to cut my crease or anything, I'm just going to go right on in there with these shades. I'm going to take the shade um, Enchanted, which is this really beautiful like bronze, but it has almost like a green sparkle to it. I'm gonna put that in the middle of my eye and then in the front part of my eye, I'm going to take the shade Folklore. First though, I'm gonna take some NYX Glitter Primer and put that all over my lid. <laughs> I always wanna say where I want the shadow to go, but I just feel like that's so abundantly obvious. But I am indeed putting this all over my lid where I want the shadow to go. So I'm taking Enchanted now. Putting this, like I said, in the center. And 
and I'm gonna wipe my brush off a little bit and take Folklore, which is basically just a lighter gold. So I'm going to take, what was the shade Redwood, run this through the front of my eye, although it doesn't really need it, and then also use this to blend into the shade Enchanted. This is like a Taylor Swift album. Enchanted, Folklore. <laughs> Maybe those are the only two shades, but beautiful and then I'm going to take Woodland another classic Taylor Swift album <laughs> that was a stupid joke and then just use this to go over the front of my crease maybe I won't really blend these shades on my lid out I'll just leave it kind of a little bit defined and then also use this to deepen up my outer corner I'm gonna take oak once more and just blend over the edges and then I'm going to go in to Enchanted and Folklore on my fingers beautiful and intensify these shades on my lid and then also blend them together with my fingers as well I'm going to take a Como Rebbe which is this light champagne Put this on my brow bone. For my lower lash line, I'm just going to take all the same shades that I used in my crease. So I'm going to take uh, Redwood and run this all along my lower lash line. Then I'm going to take Woodland and use this to deepen my lower lash line. And then I'm going to take Oak and blend this out. Then I'm going to take North Star and put this on my inner corners. And I'm going to spray that as well. And then I'm going to take the shade Pine on my pinky and just put this on the inner part of my lower lash line. I've really been enjoying doing this recently. And then finally, I'm just going to take a matte black. This is the Pat McGrath Single Black in Dark Matter but literally any black will do and I'm just going to put this in my outer corners to deepen my look a little bit more. Okay, so this is it. I'm going to go off camera, put my lashes on, do my lips, and then I will be back to show the finished look. Okay, and this is the finished look. On my lips, I have the Rimmel Stay Matte Liquid Lip Color in the shade Firestarter. I'm not sure if you can still get this. I got this a while ago, like a couple of years ago, but it's still one of my favorite red lips and it's affordable so that is really great I love the tone it's just like very true red although the amount of time that it took me to get this on and figure out my bottom lip was too much time I love this look I mean there's not much to say it's a neutral eye but it's really beautiful I've been super into neutrals recently and I would wear this literally all the time this is pretty much exactly the makeup that I do for Christmas it's like I on I don't wear red lips that often but I really take full advantage of like Christmas holiday time oops almost knocked this bottle over and I wear it's like the one time of year honestly that I wear red lips so this is basically what I look like on Christmas except most of the time I don't have makeup on anyway <laughs> let's just get into the second look third look third look. Okay, hello. Welcome to the third and final look using the Lorac Fairy Tale Forest palette. I'm going to do again something relatively simple. I just feel like this is what this palette kind of calls for, so <laughs> that's what it's telling me to do. I'm going to listen to it. <laughs> I'm going to start with the shade Mushroom, this taupe here. I mixed this with a lighter shade before, but I don't think I've used it. By itself in this video so I'm just going to run this through my crease as an initial blending shade Now I'm going 
to take the shade Redwood, which I used in the second look. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take this and run this through my outer corner and my crease. And then I'm going to take the shade Woodland again. And again, use that to deepen my crease out. Up, up. Okay, so now I'm going to take the shade Evergreen, which is this emerald green. I'm going to put this on my lid, but first I'm going to take some NYX Glitter Primer and put this all over my lid just to act as a base for the shadow. We watched Tick Tick Boom, my girlfriend and I, in the weekend, and I just have all of the songs stuck in my head. It's just like constantly playing on a loop. Okay, and now I'm going in with Evergreen, just placing this on top of the glitter primer. So that's laid down on my lid. Definitely not a super sparkly shadow, more of just like a straight up metallic. It's still really pretty, but not as exciting to me as the other like more textured sparkly shadows in this palette. I'm going to put this cap on my glitter primer before I lose it. So now I'm going to take a little bit more of the darker brown called Woodland and I'm going to run this over the edge of the shade Evergreen because I've talked about this like literally every time I use this <laughs> this um, glitter primer or glitter glue. Obviously, it's gluing the shadow down, so it's not as easy to like diffuse the shadow out when I use this. But um, that's what I'm attempting to do here: is keep the depth, but also like blend the edges of evergreen out because I want it to blend into my crease. I don't really want it to be like a harsh line like this. And then I'm also going to take that uh, shade and use this to deepen my outer corner a little bit more, although I'm not too stressed about it because I will go in with a black at the end. Um, and then I'm also just going to use that to blend the edges of evergreen so it's not like a super harsh line here either. I'm gonna take a little bit more redwood, like a very, very small amount, and just use this to blend over the edge. Just to make sure that that warmth is still peeking through. And then take mushroom on my fluffy brush and very lightly again run this over the edge. This just helps with blending and tying that initial blending shade in. Perfect, okay. So I'm gonna take Evergreen on my finger and just use that to pump, <laughs> pump the shadow up, the intensity of the shadow up on my lid. I also like to do this to help blend the edges as well. And then I'm going to take the shade Grove, which I believe is the only shade in the palette that I haven't used yet. I'm just going to take this on my finger. This is also one of the more just like straight up metallics and I'm just going to press this onto the center of my lid. So again for my lower lash line, I'm going to keep it really simple and take Redwood all along my lower lash line. And then I'm going to take Woodland and deepen my lower lash line. Now I'm going to take Mushroom and blend my lower lash line out. Now I'm going to take the shade Como Remy, which is this um, like champagne shade. I'm going to put this in my inner corners. And I'm also going to put a little bit of that on my brow bone. And then finally I'm going to take the shade Wind. It's this metallic taupe here. 
and I'm going to place this on the inner part of my lower lash line. I don't know why, but I've been loving putting a like metallic shade there. I just feel like it opens your eyes up and like adds a little bit of extra sparkle and I'm always I'm always down for adding extra sparkle wherever I can. So I think this is where I'm going to conclude with this palette. I'm going to, before I put my lashes on and stuff though, I'm gonna take a single, like just a matte black eyeshadow and further darken my outer corners. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna leave it. I'm going to put my lashes on, put my lips on. <laughs> put something on my lips and then be back to conclude this video okay and so this is the finished look and the last look of the video on my lips I used the NYX lip pencil in the shade nude truffle just honestly to help like shape them because otherwise they'll just be blobs because I have no skill in using a bullet lipstick by itself and then I used the um, Melt Ultra Matte Lipstick in the shade 710 because I just think that it goes so nicely with green. I also used a little bit of Endless Cacao in the middle but on my lips but you can pretty much assume that I've used that every time I do my makeup. Am I wearing the same shirt and earrings that I wore in the last video? Yes. Is it a different day? Yes, it is. Somehow, I think we'll manage it, manage to survive it together. Um, my thoughts on this palette are pretty much in line with what I said in my first impressions video. I really, really loved working with this. I think it's a great little palette for the most part. Obviously, I don't love how many light mattes there are in here, and that's something that detracts from how much I like it a little tiny bit. Uh, uh, <laughs> apart from that though I really had a lot of enjoyment using this and I can see myself reaching for it a lot especially on days where I don't have like time or it's just like easy to use you know like the mattes are super blendable they're very soft so if you don't like mattes that are very like powdery and cake up you when you put your brush in the pan then you probably will actually hate these but I feel like that does lend to their ability to blend and they blend like truly effortlessly. They do build quite well as well for being a little bit on the powdery side. Um, I think that the amount of depth in here is okay. This shade Woodland is obviously the darkest shade in the palette and it does build, but I think more than anything, I just would have liked, I mean, if not both, one of these beiges to go and then have a little bit of um, more variation in depth across like this top row of mattes. I think number one that would make this palette a little bit more versatile and more accessible for just more people to be able to use it in a larger variety of ways. You know what I mean? The shimmers, so, 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 so nice. Even, I feel like this palette is worth it just for the shimmers in here, even if you only use like one or two of the mattes. They're so sparkly, so textured, so beautiful. Again, same idea as with the mattes. There are a lot of similar shades in here. Not gonna lie, like this whole like six block of six shadows. We could have maybe done a little bit of something different other than like a bronzy champagne tone, but I think they're all really, really, really beautiful. There's a few different formulas in here. So the shade North Star, let me get my little thing out here. The shade North Star Enchanted Butterfly Wind and then Folklore and maybe um, Wildflower a little bit are more textured, sparkly, really, really beautiful shades. The shade Enchanted is like almost like a greeny bronzy duochrome it's so beautiful this butterfly shade is like a pink to gold duochrome so so nice and then the shades enchanted evergreen pine and grove are and como rebi are more just regular metallics 
Um, they're still really beautiful, but they don't have that same amount of texture and sparkle, which depending on your preference for shadow and metallics and whatever, could be a, a benefit or could be a positive or negative, <laughs> is what I was trying to say. But overall, I think if you were looking for a neutral palette that has beautiful metallics and sparkly shimmers and like easy to use mattes, this is a really, really good option and it's not incredibly expensive either. I think this was 45 Canadian dollars, so I don't know what that translates to in USD, but it's probably around $30, I want to say, like 30 something. And th there is an added benefit to this palette that you can um, pop these shades out. I did mention that in my first impressions, but if you didn't know, you can pop all these shades out and they're ma magnetic. So you can like use them as singles or use them, you know, to make your own palettes, put them with your singles collection or whatever you want to do. So I think that adds a lot of value to this palette as well. Obviously, you're going to get neutral looks no matter what you do. I tried to like kind of do some more different things with this palette, see where it can where it can take you, but overall it's a neutral palette. I mean, <laughs> you can only do so much, but I really, really enjoyed it. I think it's actually a perfect palette for this time of year as well. It's a very winter to me, like very holiday season winter palette, which I don't know what about it makes it feel like winter to me. Maybe just because I wear more neutrals in the winter, or at least I have been this year. All right, so I'm gonna stop talking now because I don't feel like I have anything further anything more insightful to add. Let me know if you like this palette. Have you bought it? Are you not interested? I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching this video and I would love to see you in my next one. Bye.